many distinguished uh, ambassadors in the audience and uh, all the persons attending this Maharana Pratap Institute of Dialogue. I am very grateful to the organizers uh, for having invited me to share my views on a subject which impacts everyone's life and well-being. I have known the dedicated, energetic and perceptive founder of Usana's Foundation, Shri Abhinav Pandya, since 2014. He has combined ground-level information gathering by traveling to inhospitable and challenging terrains with fine analytical skills and interactions with intelligence and security experts to arrive at realistic insights which have been incorporated in his books and articles. I would like to uh, first just pick up from the point that Master Dilon was mentioning about the special relationship between India and Israel. In the mid-70s, I was posted as commercial counselor in the High Commission in England. And I was in an apartment building. On one of the levels, the ground floor, there was a German-Jewish couple who had left uh, uh, Germany at the end of the 30s, I think 39 or 40, and then taken a few in England. He, they brought out, we used to occasionally go and play scrabble with them, they brought out from their shelf of books a book of history of the Jewish people, and they opened a chapter on Jews in India. He said with great pride, I remember Mr. Bernd Lisht, one country in the world which has never discriminated against the Jews and welcomed them. And probably they were driven out after the Roman second attack and the destruction of the Roman the Jewish temple in AD 70 came to India. And there are synagogues in, uh, I think, Cochin, in <laughs> other parts, wherever they want to build synagogues, open house. India, over its long millennial of history, has always had a very respectful attitude towards all religions. The, the, one of the apostles of Jesus Christ, St. Thomas, came into India, again on the East Coast, AD 62. He lived his life there. He preached all over southern India. He tried to convert people to the teachings of Christ. Many people got converted. We still have a large presence of Syrian Christian Jews in the or rather the Christians in Kerala. Uh, Kerala coast. But basically, India has always believed in the core aspect of religion, which is, the core of religion is love. The four letters L-O-V-E. And we have always said that God is an ocean of love. And he has can only be reached and you can link up with him in a spirit of love and devotion and service. You want to love God, you have to love his teachers, you have to love the fellow human beings. I read a very interesting book. I have a library in which there are at, a, at an institution in India, which has at present 100,000 books on world religions. Every single religion is shown there in different languages. I read a book by a Pakistani lady who used to be the wife of the Pakistani Home Minister. Her name was Bilkis Sheikh. And she wrote a book called I Dared Call Him Father. The book narrated the history that after being married many years to this uh, Pakistani Home Minister, one fine day he came back from a social evening said, talaab, 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 you are gone. You are no longer my wife. She was clever last year. She retreats to her parental home in the village, calls the mall wheel, please help me at this very difficult emotional time. I am in such a great trauma. I have been ousted from my <coughs> home, marital home. Simple talaab, talaab. He reads to her the Quran for the first time. The Quran says if there are any questions where there is a question of doubt, please go back to the Bible, the teaching of Jesus Christ. She goes back to the Bible and reads it. 
By the way, in Pakistan, it was prohibited for a Muslim person to read a religious text from another religion. She said there can be a fatwa, you can be killed. There was a driver of hers who was Urdu, of course, he knew Urdu. He knew a missionary who used to have a Bible in Urdu. She read it. And then she began to see, she says, from what did I would I learned, no, it can be wrong. I'm not, I'm going to say what she wrote in the book. When I was going through the Quranic injunctions, the law of how you have to conduct your life, it was always either you do this or there's a punishment. You do this or there's punishment. She said, when I read the Bible, Christ said, you love God the Father with all your heart and soul and love thy neighbor as thyself. She said, here was a sort of uh, what we had been brainwashed to believing. You do this or you go to Dozak. Hell. Here was a result which said, love, forgiveness. Our father who art in heaven, I don't believe in all those things. She said, I shifted my religious religions from Islam to Christianity. Now, I'm not saying this should be a good example. Because I believe within the Islamic tradition, they say it's a religion of peace. It is a religion of peace. I have read books on the teachings of Prophet Muhammad. Karen Armstrong is a brilliant British writer who writes on religious subject. She's a little book. Muhammad is a prophet for our times. Now the book says, when he started his new religion, whatever revelations he got, and started giving his new religion to people who believed in tribal gods in the Mecca Medina region, he said, You tell anybody whom you meet, if he's a stranger, what my religious beliefs are. If he agrees and listens to it and takes it on board, very good. Otherwise, let him go his way. There is no forced proselytization for them to convert. But the fact remains during the, the long years of Muslim rule in India, you go to any Hindu temple site, you will find smashed statues of Hindus, gods, and goddesses. Our uh, iconic temple to Lord Shiva in Varanasi during the time of Aurangzeb. Partly it was demolished, partly the Yanwaki mosque was constructed. Similar things happened in Mathura, similar things happened elsewhere. But in an Islamic theocratic state, why must it be that Saudi Arabia can build? I was in London at the time, a huge minaret and a mosque, you know, in Regent's Park. But in their country, it was not permitted for any other religion to have a place of worship. The temple or a church or a synagogue. Why? Why this asymmetry? What I want to say is, you know, we talk about radicalization, security issues, and the whole law. Look at the groups. Where does it all start? It's starting with the religious prejudice, religious uh, intolerance, and a decided, you know, decision to kind of steamroll people who don't belong to your uh, religious beliefs. I think in today's 21st century, in this world that we are living in, a world of globalization, people are moving into each other's uh, areas for better socio-economic uh, benefits in their lives. So how can we allow people to go into those areas with an exclusive theo theocratic mindset? Okay, Christian Europe opened the doors to migrants coming in from the war zones in Afghanistan, in Syria, and Iraq. Good. Chancellor Merkel is criticized why she allowed one million uh, war average people to come. But having come, they should be very receptive to the host country culture, what are their belief systems, how they conduct their lives. And what do we see in Sweden at the time of the Eid celebration in one of the cities on a public street, which is a motor, sort of motorway, people are supposed to be driving up and down. Because people are spinning out into the street to celebrate Eid and say the Namaz prayers, they are pelting stones and 
attacking, you know, with bars and crowbars and all, those cards which you are applying there. If you are coming to a host country, for heaven's sake, start respecting the host country sentiments. You can't say we are going to impose Sharia law in parts of the UK because it happens to be a ghetto area of the Muslims. No. And I think uh, the so-called tolerance which are the European Union or other countries are showing to these people, I think you are playing softball. You have to defend your own value systems and tell them, okay, here it stops. And I have said in everything text which I give to people and they can circulate it. If any immigrant comes into your country, I said it to the Australian High Commissioner and he called on me and I was Governor of Delhi. I said, when you are admitting people all from any country, if he is not prepared to respect all religions and all systems which are in place already in your country, which are a sort of polychromatic culture that you have, a diverse culture, if they don't sign that paper that I am ready to respect Hinduism or Sikhism or Christianity or something and you only believe in the supremacy of Islam, okay, you want to pay that, well, go ahead. Nobody is talking about But don't try and dominate your point of view and say we are going to have Nizam, Mustafa, either and then try to dominate it. It won't happen. This is where you are showing the roots of violent resistance. And if those right-wing parties have come up in Germany, AFD and the others and the Swedish parties, and they have won elections now. It's not happening a vacuum. It's happening because of a sort of behavior pattern that people are trying to foist. And today, India is now beginning to assert its Nathan Dharm thousand-year-old value system of openness, of love, of service, there is a reason that we are saying sorry, we are not going to allow that system to get kind of overwhelmed or diluted by infiltration of <coughs> cultures which do not have that kind of uh, attitude to openness and that centrality of the aspect of love as the source of connecting with the divine. I will cite two or three things. Guru Nanak Dev, when we talk about Vasudeva Kutumbakam, the well-being of this whole world. This was the view. Who now they be found in the sixth faith. Nanak naam chaldi kala tere bhane sarvatra kala. Let all be in a state of happiness and prosperity by working for the well-being of all. Guru Gobind Singh, tenth. Founder of the Khalsa. Today we are seeing Khalistani flags. What did he say? Did he say you pick up guns and start shooting people who don't agree with their point of view? He said, Saaj kahu sun leo sabay jin prem kiyo tin hi prabhupayo. Listen all, I am speaking the truth. Only those who know how to love can find Within the Islamic tradition, and I have the highest respect for it, there is a Sufi tradition. Sufi tradition of inner worship, meditation, and through that you connect. What did Jesus Christ say? The body is the temple of the living God. Seek and ye shall find, knock and the door shall open. Body is the temple of the living God. In our Vedic tradition, we say, Nar Narayani De. This human body, which is the home of the divine, seek him within. I read a beautiful book by Elaine Pagels, <coughs> professor of ancient Christian history, PhD from Harvard, now teaching in Princeton. She wrote a book called Beyond the Belief. She said it's not good enough to be a Christian to claim that you go to church and you say, I believe in <coughs> Jesus Christ. No. You believe in what he said, kingdom of heaven is within you, find that kingdom within. Go within into deep meditation and find it. That is being Christian. My short point is if you want to get out of this radicalism issues, 
the core you have to look at is the root cause is religion. And whether it is between the extreme fringe of Hindus, the extreme fringe of Muslims, they have to come to the middle ground, respecting each other, speaking with each other, and seeing we have to live and let live. And so along with everybody else. Whether it is in the Israeli situation of the Arab Muslims and the Jewish brothers and sisters. Bring them to a table, talk. What is so problem that it cannot be solved? They have had this recent uh, rapprochement with the Saudi, with the rapprochement Iran. Many years ago, when Mrs. Sushma Suraj was the foreign minister and Mr. M.J. Akhtar was the minister of state, I went to the Indian foreign minister and said the Shia Sunni conflict unnecessary. They are saying we are Muslims, they are Muslims. I know how the whole split happened. I have read those histories. Shias believe more in Hazrat Ali, the fourth Arab, he was a proper man. Any case, all believe what are the five things. I say I am a Muslim. La ilaha illa Allah, Muhammad Rasul Allah, Muhammad. Namaz five times a day. Zakat gives some charity. Observe the month of fasting, Ramadan or Ramadan. Go once in your life for Hajj. And I read up, I'm concluding this final point. I read a book called Life of Pi. It was made into a very nice film. That person, the protagonist, he is a Hindu Brahman boy. He says, I found going to a mosque, out of curiosity, he went to a mosque. He talked to the person, the Malvi there, five times a day. He said, it was so peaceful, so wonderful. How to invoke God's blessings? I was very happy. The Malvi felt that he has come to me and he is coming again and again to mosque for prayer, so he must be now wanting to convert to Islam. Then he went to a church and he attended some church services and stayed there for some time. He felt very happy in the church also, very peaceful, calm. Saw the great image of Jesus Christ on the cross. Of course, he was a Brahmin boy. At one point, they all meet. The, the parents are there, the Brahmin parents. They have gone to some common place. The Christian father of the church comes, a priest, the Muslim Maulvi comes. And they see him and each one is saying, oh, he's a Christian, he's a Muslim. And the father said, no, he's a Brahmin Hindu. And he says, I found no problem being all. That if you go into the core of it, there's a difference. And that's why Dr. Radha Krishnan, our second president, said in his Hindu view of life, we feel as Hindus that we are brothers and sisters united by a common quest for God-realization. Independent of the pathways <coughs> we 